I'm going the opposite of traffic, but I can't stop. Yeah, I'm not even pedaling. Hey guys, Josh here again with Daily Mountain Bike Rider and today I'm super stoked because I'm at Walmart for a new bike day. If you guys have been watching the channel, you know I love cheap bikes. I had my Dick Sporting Goods bike that was a big, big favorite on the channel, but now it's time to get a different style of bike. That's right, an e-bike. And I saw that Walmart sells an e-bike for just $400. Now I'm totally against e-bikes, I have no desire to get one for real, but if the price is this good, I mean, why not get it? And it's a mountain bike, so what we're gonna do is go buy an e-bike, and then of course go test out and see how it works, and then finally go put it to the test against real mountain bike trails. It's over. We are screwed. So we've got a GoPro so we can get some sneaker shots inside the Walmart to go find our bike for today. Let's go. All right, so walking into Walmart, of course, with masks on, I got cameraman Isaac over here. He's uh, gonna be with the camera, the GoPro. Like I said, Walmart and I know other places are not too stoked about people filming, so bringing the GoPro, keeping it low key. Let's go check out the bikes, Isaac. Oh yes. And uh, Isaac's been editing and filming for me, so maybe for your pay, we'll buy you a new Walmart bike today. Oh, that would be just the best thing on the planet. Let's go. <laughs> I am amazed coming in here, how many bikes there actually are. I heard with COVID that bikes have been going crazy, even at Walmart and everywhere, but they have a lot of bikes in stock. And besides the fact that these handlebars are literally backwards. These bikes look pretty cool. All right, time to find the e-bikes. Hmm. So it turns out they don't have the e-bikes in stock here at Walmart, which I probably should have thought about before starting the video. So time to order it online and get back to you. Well, since they don't have the e-bike, at least this is $400. It's a tank and it's, you know, basically the same thing. So I could take this on a mountain bike trail. A little longer than a few minutes later. And here we are. We have it. The $400 Hyper Walmart E Mountain Bike. And as I said, I've never ridden an e-bike before and right off the bat, turning this battery on and starting to pedal, this thing is so fun. It goes very fast, it gives you just a thrill. Um, but overall, I am not very impressed by this bike. And here's what I mean by that. $400 basically gets you the cheapest mountain bike components you can possibly buy. This fork starting off, as soon as you put any pressure on it, completely gets clapped out. The drivetrain, though it is Shimano, and they really want you to know that because there's like seven Shimano logos on it, um, is only like eight speeds and it's very entry level. Everything on this bike was somebody saying, how do I put an e-bike with a battery on it and spend the least amount of money possible and tell people it's a mountain bike. Overall though, this looks like it's going to be a lot of fun for just cruising around the streets. I have a sneaking suspicion that it's going to be awful when we take it off road. But first, let's go put some miles on this thing and see how it actually rides. All right, so this is really odd. This bike like can't control its speed at lower speed. Basically, once you start pedaling, the engine kicks in and it's like a light switch. The different settings to cap you out on your top speed, but you can't go slow. There's actually wires set up for when you pull the brakes, it kills the motor. So if you try to go at a slower pace, you just feel like you're pedaling a 45 pound Walmart e-bike. Ironic. The other thing I noticed is as soon as you start pedaling and going at any speed and you put any pressure on the fork, it completely bottoms out every time right away. Now, surprising thing, these brakes are just like normal V brakes, old school style, and they actually work really well. Like I am shocked. I thought they were gonna be garbage, but maybe it would be like a liability thing if an e-bike that goes this fast did not break out of the box. Yeah, seems to make sense. Let's keep riding. Well, overall, I'm pretty impressed with this e-bike. The, the motor actually works, though it's very much an on and off. Uh, it is a lot of fun. 
My question that comes into my mind is who is this bike for? And here's the thing, this bike is not for the average person who doesn't ride a bike very often to jump on and use it. Because in order to go at a slower pace with other people without e-bikes, you're gonna have a really bad time. You have to be comfortable going fast, so you're gonna have to travel far enough that you have a place to get to. So I would say this bike is really only for commuters, like if you're trying to get from A to B. But the bike does say mountain, Therefore, maybe this is for the really lazy person who hates climbing to go climbing with their friends. So it's time to go over to the mountains, climb this thing up, and then go down some difficult mountain bike trails. Let's see how this thing fares. One eternity later. All right, everybody. We are on location here at Larrabee State Park, AKA Chuckanut. This is the only area in Bellingham that you can ride an e-bike. So of course we had to bring the Hyper here and it's time to put this thing to the test. Now, I'm a little nervous about going downhill. I already can tell this fork's gonna be uh, deadly. Uh, but what I am looking forward to is pedaling uphill because I think it's gonna be delightful. And behind the camera, I have Isaac and we are going to rig up a towing setup so that I can tow him on the e-bike. And of course, we're gonna film it the whole time so you can see all the fun. So let's hope I don't end uh, this ride terribly having to go to the hospital. But besides that, let's go. One shift later. Isaac, how comfortable do you feel about this towing setup? Uh, comfortable is not the word I would use. <laughs> it's gonna be sick, dude. <laughs> is it working? Yeah, I'm not even pedaling. That's cheating. The bungee cord is the key to this setup. Cause it means I have to do work too. <laughs> we are really cruising. Feels like it. I think I'm working harder than you. Yeah, probably. I'm in like seventh gear though. I'm in my lowest gear. <laughs> Six and a half hours later. Well, we made it up. Towing is a lot more difficult uh, than it looks, but it actually got us up faster. Once I stopped towing Isaac and just pedaling on my own, this thing, it pulls pretty good. The odd thing, like I've mentioned earlier, is since it's not driven by your crank input and then output, it's driven by the rear hub. Once it gets bogged down, you're just gonna have a bad time. Speaking of having a bad time, we're at the top of this beautiful trail, Double Down. This is rated a single black diamond, but there are some techie options. Um, I am very nervous about the fork because it doesn't exist. More nervous about the tires because they're basically road tires. So we're gonna go to the first feature, which is right around the corner and see how things go. All right, so here's the entry feature, which much more muddy than I wanted it to be. We actually delayed filming until we could get a clear, nice day. Never got one. Okay. So right here is where the bump city comes into play. And the best line is to stay left over these wet, muddy rocks. And then there's a bit of a drop. You can roll it though. Let's go down to the lower end because that shows you how kind of terrifying this is going to be. So this is the exit and uh, yeah. This is going to be interesting. All right, Isaac is gonna show us how this is supposed to be done. All right, drop in. Okay, I got no fork, oh my gosh. Oh. Ah. <laughs> yeah, the fork is still working, but man, that noise, that replay is going to be interesting. I got to do it one more time. I got to try not to uh, clunk the fork too bad. It was just this G out right here, and I could tell right as I dropped in. By the way, this is the first downhill we're doing. There's not any suspension. All right, let's push this big behemoth up. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I think I just broke the chain, but do I need that? I don't think so. It popped right off. I'm gonna take this sketchy line. Oh gosh. There's very little traction. Oh, oh my nuts. Oh, oh, oh. Well, what happened was my feet slipped off the pedals and then all my weight went right on the saddle. And <laughs> as you can see, 
I don't think the saddle was designed to hold that much weight. And luckily, when my feet slipped off, I landed right on my business to put all the pressure onto the saddle. <sighs> you know, they say the pros ride with their seats at an angle. <laughs> all right, time to uh, Sam Pilgrim this seat problem. Oh, there we go. Good as new. See, <laughs> it's perfect. That bent way too easily. Dude, look at that is not designed for anything mountain related. But it's not cracked, I don't think so. Several days later. <laughs> All right. The bike kind of made it. The battery, so you guys know, is almost dead, which it was basically fully charged. We did one tow lap, so the battery's not great. The saddle I kept sitting on, it kept bending back. Um, the brakes now are pulling all the way to the lever. Literally, I'm not exaggerating on that. Um, and so these pads are gonna be worn out. Probably if I did one more ride, I would be praying for my life and then they would break. So overall, should you buy the Walmart Hyper e-bike for mountain biking? No, no, just, just don't. Uh, Cobra Kyle tried to warn me and told me don't buy the bike, which made me wanna buy it more. So maybe I should say yes. Now nah, I could get sued. No, don't buy this bike um, because you will die. So I do these things so you don't have to, so don't do it. All right, I think that wraps it up. You know what time it is. Don't spend too much time watching a guy ride a hyper e-bike from Walmart, but get out there, ride your bike and make sure you do it every day.